Hello YouTube and welcome to part 3 of my Blender Basic Series tutorial. What you see on the screen here is just a little blade I modeled to kind of show you what you can do with what you learned in the previous lesson. And you'll see that it has some colors and details on it and this is something that we're going to go over. Um, after this lesson we're going to make a fish, we're going to learn about unwrapping and making textures and that's what this is. So this is something to look forward to. And, of course, you can attempt to make a weapon like this using your knowledge from the previous tutorial. So I just wanted to show you something nicer looking than what we made than what I showed you how to make there. Alright, well, I'm going to open up a new file and I'm going to go through the points of this lesson. So we're going to learn in this lesson what a template is and how to use it. We're also going to learn more advanced modeling techniques for making something a little bit more interesting than just some blocky weapons. And we're going to reinforce skills from prior lessons, of course. Now, we're going to be using a template for this. And this is a template right here. Bring it up quickly. There you go. So this, this is a template that we're going to be using. And it's the beginner fish template. It's basically just a picture, a flat 2D image of a model you're going to be making from different perspectives oftentimes. So... This particular one is from a side perspective and a top perspective, and it's a remora fish on the top and a dolphin on the bottom, and I'll show you how to use that and also how to put it in. So let's start with our basic scene here. Delete the cube by pressing X delete, and I'm going to turn on screencast keys. So by pressing N, you can get this menu here, and this menu is where you're going to add background images, and this is going to be important for the purposes of this tutorial. So just check that box, click add image. And then when you're when you're downloading the template, there will be a link in the description for the fish template so that you can follow along with this lesson. And when you're downloading it, um, be sure to be sure to make a sort of organized folder structure. So as you can see right here, I've got I've got a folder structure going. Let me just find my videos there. Whoops. All right, video tutorials, blender under basic and then I've got like a lesson one lesson two lesson three folder so that might be a good idea for you to make something like this when you're starting to save uh, projects because as we start making nicer things you might want to start saving them and you can do you can save projects from this menu under file okay so now that I've gone over that I believe the image is in good and you'll notice that you don't see any change in here and that's because you need to be in direct front side or top view and also in orthogonal mode so if you see I press 1 to go in direct side view there's nothing but then if I press 5 to go in orthogonal you'll see the background image and I've, I've said this before that orthogonal is going to be important later and this is when it does become important so first we're going to move this dolphin this will be our front image and I'm going to press N and make a new window as well by clicking on this triangle in the corner and dragging so that way we can see both perspectives at the same time, which is really handy. And you can also press T to get rid of the toolbox in this menu, because there's no point in having them in both windows. There we go. All right. So now that I've done that, I'm going to press T again to take away this tool menu, because that just gives me more room. I'm going to press N, and now I want this dolphin here to be here. And of course, the dolphin is not a fish. I, I know I said we'd be making a fish. I'm sorry. Uh, I betrayed you. It's actually a mammal but if you do want to make a fish you can always grab my other templates I have I have enough for three and I'm strongly considering making one of the models available for you to use so um, I'll update you on the later tutorial if I do that or not but then you'll be able to add a pre-made model to your scene but only one not a bunch of them okay so now I'm gonna do the same thing I did here for this image and you see I'm adjusting the Y and X values to move it either left or right or up or down And of course that should be pretty straightforward okay now I want let's see this is actually in the wrong view this should be in the top view there you go and you press 7 to go into the top view okay so now I want this to be in the exact center so I'm just gonna slowly slowly drag this slider until I can get it there I think 2.542 maybe no okay 2.56 there we go all right so you can adjust these numbers until you get it exactly right but I'm going to if you look at the template here you'll see that the fin starts at this line just about so I'm going to have 
I'm going to, whoopsies, I'm going to use the x value to move it so that this line matches up with this line right here. 5, because I want them to be consistent. And again, this is just going to be a little bit of changing numbers. I might fast forward through this, I'm not sure. I've been trying to make it a goal to keep my tutorials under 20 minutes long, just to save you guys some time. Okay, perfect. So now you'll see that they line up really nicely in both views, and that will be helpful. Actually, you have to have them line up pretty well. And you can use this grid as a reference to do that. Okay, so now we have a top and a side view, and we're going to start inserting the first shape for modeling. Exciting stuff. Okay, let me now shift A for add. You remember that from previous lessons. And we're going to add a circle. Now, we're going to want to adjust the amount of edges that this circle has, because right now it has too many. Um, it's, it's a little bit too detailed. We want to start simple. So I'm going to change. I'm going to press T to bring up the tool menu. And I'm going to change these vertices to 16. And you can only, you can only do this uh, right after you've added a shape. So if you've started editing the shape, it's not really going to work. So add the shape, change the vertices to 16, so there's a few less edges. And if you want to make this have more polygons later on, I'll show you how to do that too. But for now, this is good. Okay, now let's scale it until... Well, what, what I want to happen is if you see this orange line here where the circle is, I want the top, I want the bottom to be here and the top to be here. Because it's going, it's basically going to be matched up to the dolphin's body. And that's why the grid comes in handy at times. Okay. Now while I'm doing this, um, actually let me just do this first. I'm going to tab into edit mode and press E for extrude. You remember that from the previous lesson. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go along the length of this dolphin's body and I'm going to make the same adjustments so that the bottom of, of this shape is here and the top is here. And what's also important is you need to go, you need to check the top view here and make sure that the top view also aligns. So now you can see that it looks it looks good in this view, but in the top view it's off, and that's why you want to have both views. That is the exact reason because this is what happens. It it looks good on one side, and then when you rotate the model, and suddenly it looks terrible. There we go. And remember, you can scale along different axes. So for example, here if I just generally scale, it gets bigger here too. But I want to scale along the y-axis, and you can see that's not affecting this view. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this, and while I do that, I'm going to just take the time to say that I am going to be making a template tutorial, or a tutorial on how to make templates, also using free software. So I'm going to make one for that using GIMP, and I'll show you how to just use a general uh, generic camera to put that picture on a computer and make it nice and straight, even if you don't have a scanner. So yeah, that, that should be helpful for anyone that wants to make their own templates. And I'll go and do a little more detail, but for now we're just going to keep on going along this dolphin's body. Just keep on extruding. Whoop! I forgot to select a vertice there. And what I'm when I when I go into this uh, sort of transparent mode, I'm pressing Z to go into wireframe. That allows me to select a mesh that or a vertice that I cannot see. So, for example, if I don't press Z and I and I press C for circle select. So C for circle select, dragging it along here. And you'll see when I rotate this, I haven't selected any of these vertices because they weren't within my line of sight. But when you press Z, so let me go into here. When you press Z, you can select anything that's underneath the circle. So that's what I'm doing here. And additionally, you can also adjust this, this little button right here. You can use that to do the same thing. But I like pressing Z, so that's what I have continued to do. There you go. So extrude and then grab and then scale GZ to grab up. And it's just going to be a lot of minute adjustments like that as you are going through this. So bear, bear with me while I do that. Now uh, as far as templates go again, it it may not seem like it at first, but it's actually incredibly helpful to know how to draw by hand in order to make 3D things, both for making concept art and for templates. So I would highly recommend that you learn to draw by hand if you want to get into 3D, because it's just so helpful. Okay, let me just adjust this. If you see here, I have a little, um, I have a little dip going on here. 
So it, it goes, it goes, it has a smooth curve and then there's a dip on either side. So uh, dolphins don't really have waistlines there, so I'm gonna, gonna make this a little bit wider. There we go. Now oh, it looks like a barrel, but that's okay. Okay, and then uh, additionally I'm also, I can also use B or box select to select lots of vertices. Okay, I think I briefly went over that in the previous tutorial. Now this is actually going to be a two-part tutorial because again I want to make these tutorials uh, shorter than 20 minutes so in the next tutorial we'll be covering making the fins of the animal and in this tutorial we're gonna get the general body shape and of course I kind of yammered on a little bit about templates um, so just remember to watch the template video if you're interested in making templates because they're pretty cool very useful as well okay so now we're on to the nose scale on the y-axis here to match it up remember as you're doing this to constantly check both views make sure that you're matching it up as you go so that you don't get any weird inconsistencies when you rotate the model okay so extrude grab scale you'll see here it looks good in this view but now it's a little bit off in this view and another thing to bear in mind, these templates are not perfect. So if you see uh, if you see a little inconsistency or you think that it would look better done another way, then go ahead and change it if you want to. That is perfectly fine. Okay, let me grab this. Yeah, I'm a human being too, I make mistakes. So again, if you want to change anything, that's okay. Scale. All right, looks like we're getting close. Extrude, grab, scale. All right. And I'm gonna press F to fill in that little hole in the end with the face. Okay, well, I'm having some weird technical difficulties as is the case with Blender, but think that they can be resolved. So I'm just going to select everything over here. Press F to make a face. Select everything over all these, press F to make a face. Hmm. Okay, well, one of the things to do in this situation is it looks like I have double vertices or vertices that are both in the same location, so it's creating a double. So if you select the entire model and press T, there will be an option in this menu for remove doubles. I'm actually kind of glad this happened because now I can show you. So press T, click remove doubles, and you'll see I removed 126 vertices, which is kind of crazy. It means I was making a few... Um, a few slip ups when I was making this but now that's cleaned up the model a little bit so I should be able to work fine from there not entirely sure where 128 extra vertices came from that's a little bit odd but there you go make another face and everything is all fine and dandy now okay let's see it matches up well in both views now if I rotate this you'll see that it's kind of starting to look like a dolphin actually let me go out of orthogonal view there you go that's better so now it's in perspective view and you're seeing it's kind of taking on a dolphin-esque shape. Don't know if that's a word, but it will become one as of today. Okay, so I'm going to go through making the rest of the body. Actually, hmm, you know what, I think, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through making the rest of the body because there's some stuff at the tail I want to show you. And then in the next tutorial, we're going to make the fins. And shortly after that, we're going to be making textures for this and bringing it to life, which will be really cool. Or at least I think. I mean, you can, can have your own opinion on the matter, but I think it's pretty cool to make a 3D model and then animate it and watch it move. Okay. Let's see. Do -do -do. All right, so we'll keep matching it up. And um, yes, it really is like this whenever you're modeling. It's not the modeling is not the most uh, exciting thing, but um, I personally enjoy it because I like seeing something that I drew by hand turn into a 3D image. So definitely has its benefits. So yeah, um, it's not the most again, it's not the most thrilling thing, but you know, hopefully you're here to learn Blender. So think that you can you'd probably be okay with watching this All right and we'll just have a few more now another thing to note is that you want to keep these fairly consistent so you'll see that along the body 
most of most of these are fairly are fairly consistent in the way they're spaced you know they're there's not a massively long rectangle and then a bunch of really short ones so you want to keep it about even like that it just makes things simpler okay so now that we have that actually going to let's see leave it there all right yeah so i'm going to i'm going to end the tutorial here you can you can press tab and rotate around um one other thing if you press t and go into shading you can cl click smooth here so it doesn't have you don't see all the faces oh wow okay well when this happens another bug to kind of show you how to fix this is great i'm getting all the problems but that's okay because It'll save you guys a lot of headache in the end. So if I press Control N now while in object mode, or edit mode actually, my bad, Control N in edit mode, it's gonna make all the normals consistent. And what normals are, there you go. Normals are basically the way that texture or the way that textures are displayed. So to save data, or I mean to save system memory. When you're rendering things, generally you only want to render one side rather than both sides because why would you render an image on a side of a polygon if someone is never going to see that side, you know? That's why when you go inside of objects in video games, oftentimes you'll see that the inside is invisible because it's only actually displaying one side. So the normals are what determine which sides are displayed, and sometimes they go a little wonky as you, as you saw there. And one will be displaying outside, another will be displaying inside, and so on. So when I press Control N, it made all of the normals point in a consistent direction, or in this case, outside. So yeah, remember if you get weird, weird spots or patches on your on your object, always press Control N first, just to make sure. And also remember that if you're having some weird issues with modeling, usually remove doubles is a good option to check too. So that was good. I didn't expect to be um, showing you guys that, but it turned out well. So. In the next tutorial, we're going to be making fins for our dolphin, and then we're going to be making some textures, and last but not least, we're going to be animating the dolphin. So I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.